Hi there Fabric Jugglers, it's Babs here from Fiery Phoenix and today is going to be the first in a series of tutorials relating to working with patterns. Um, now in this instance I'm going to talk you through what you get when you purchase a, a pre-printed pattern, the information on the back and there is a lot of information on the back and what is actually contained inside the pattern um, and walk you through some of the basics uh, that you need to understand and think about when you're purchasing and selecting a pattern. Um, there will be some other tutorials coming up which will talk about the different pattern markings, how you prepare a pattern, whether you want to cut it or whether you want to trace it, if you want to trace it, how you trace it, um, and some other bits and pieces that will help you work with your patterns. This is a very popular request in the Starting to Sew group, so hopefully this will be a series that will help everybody. Right then, so when you choose a pattern, the first thing you need to do is, is make sure that you like the type of garment that's being created. Nine times out of ten you will have more than one item that is created within a pattern and they are termed as views. So in this instance you may or may not be able to see there are different letters associated with the different garments on here. So we have A for the blouse, B for the trousers, C for a skirt and D for the jacket. Um, and so we've got A, C and D in this particular picture, A and B, A, B, D and A and C, um, which may sound quite complicated. I'll put a, a, a close up so you can actually see what I'm talking about there. But that's what the letters actually refer to. And there are some people who get a little bit confused by that before they even begin to look at anything more complicated, like the reverse of the packet. And the reverse of the packet has a vast amount of information. Um, so, so we start with the views. These are the front views and these are the drawings of these views. Not all patterns will have a made up model version. It could just be that they have um, pictures or drawings. On the reverse of the pattern, you'll find images of the backs of each of the garments that you see on the front. So we've got a reverse of A, reverse of B, reverse of C and obviously the reverse of D. Again, what I'll do is um, have close-up images, hopefully off to the side here somewhere, um, for each of the, the elements that I'm talking about on a pattern so that you can, can see that in a bit more detail. Uh, despite the fact that this is showing a full-grown woman wearing the outfit, patterns still refer to a lady as a Mrs or a, a Miss Petite, um, which can seem a little bit confusing because I would assume that that is for somebody who is who is um, early teens, if they're being referred to as a miss. However, that is not the case, um, because this pattern in particular covers sizes eight to 24, which is not necessarily sizes that I would associate with somebody with the term Miss Petite. Um, however, that is one of the idiosyncrasies of the, the pre-printed pattern market. So, I'll just take you through the elements on the back of the um, of the back bleh, on the back of the pattern even. Um, in this particular instance, we've got one half in English and then another half in French. Um, so quite often you will find patterns that are multilingual. Um, obviously, you look for the language that is is your first preference, and that's the one you follow. Don't try and translate um, another language. That is going to lead to all sorts of difficulties. So. When you work your way through the information, uh, you have to start off with the um, the pattern number, which in this case is K1467, and it tells you under that how many pieces um, the pattern actually contains, how many parts to a pattern. So whilst you've got the four main pattern pieces, which is the shirt, um, the trousers, the skirt, and the jacket, there are obviously various elements, sleeves, waistbands, front spacks, legs that um, that comprise those particular garments and there are 24 pieces within this pattern selection, this packet of information. Um, it then goes on to describe the the um, the patterns within the within the packet and in this case we've got Mrs or Miss Petite top, jacket and pull on pants and skirt. It then moves down to talk about fabrics. I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> Oh, no, I'm not. It then goes on to talk about the fabrics, uh, which in this case are lightweight to medium weight uh, woven fabrics, such as linen or crepe. And then for the specific garments, 
So for the top trousers and skirt, it talks about silky types. The top can also be in Georgette. Um, and then we, it talks about the fabrics that, or describes the fabrics that are relevant to the jacket. Um, so it could be bouquet, brocade, peak, poplin, sateen, twill or tweed. Um, and it also talks about whether you need to allow extra quantities of fabric if you are matching plaid stripes or one-way designs. Notions um, are the extra bits and bobs that you need to complete a pattern. Zips, buttons, um, shoulder pads for the, for the actual jacket itself. Um, it could be braid, any kind of trim or interfacing would be listed under Notions. Um, body measurements. Now this is where you realise how far people, real people are from standard body measurements that are used for patterns. Just because you are a size 12 in a shop or a 14 or an 18 or whatever size you happen to be does not mean that you will automatically fit that size on a pattern. So you very, must you must make sure that you measure yourself and there'll be a whole separate video on how to measure and I'll show you how to measure a real woman, um, a child, um, a girl and a boy. So you'll be able to understand what measurements you really do need to take and how different people are, real people, real world people from, from mannequins. Um, so you go through and you can work out your own measurements or the measurements of the person that you are creating a garment for and compare that to work out what size you actually need from the pattern. Um, it gives an indication of European sizes and, and UK sizes, but still work off your own measurements rather than thinking, well, when I go into that shop, I'm, I'm actually a 14. So I'll just, just use the 14 size because it won't necessarily work out that that is actually the case. You then move on to how much fabric you need for each of the items. So for the top, and it, it also takes into account the width of the fabric that you've purchased. So you can buy um, fabric at 45 inch width or you can buy fabric at 60 inch width. So you need to pay attention to the fabric you're buying uh, rather than just getting carried away, which is so easy to do by the touch and the feel and the, the beauty of the fabric that you're looking at. You do need to still concentrate and take note of width of fabric. Um, is there a pattern? Do you need to allow extra for the, uh, for the stripes or plaids or, or the items that we talked about earlier? Um, and again, it will tell you if you need to have interfacing and if so, how much. So you're looking for a size 12, for example. Uh, for the top, you'd need one and a quarter um, yards at 45 inches wide without any kind of pattern. Um, and you would need to have um, lightweight, fusible interfacing. Um, and again, it talks about a particular brand. In this case, it talks about Pellon. Um, and so we go again with the, the pants and the skirt, and that says worn below the waist. Now where they talk about waist is actually your belly button. Belly button is the waist marking, and then we're wearing the skirt or pant an inch below your belly button. So that's where you need to measure for your measurements, um, and that's what you need to take into account when you're looking at lengths and so forth. Uh, again, for B and C, you need to have some elastics, and then for the jacket, you need to have some more interfacing. And then finally, it talks about the finished garment measurement, and that includes design and wearing ease. Now, ease is where you've actually allowed for movement when you're wearing a garment. I'm doing a nice robot arm there, that's, that's very um, helpful, <laughs> helpful to the discussion. But uh, basically, if you create something in a, um, um, in a non-stretchy fabric, so if we go for a cotton that's not cut on the bias, it's going to be quite, quite firm. Um, if we don't allow any ease within those measurements, it will fit us perfectly, but we won't be able to move in it. We won't be able to move our arms forwards or backwards. We might as well be wearing a corset, uh, which means it will be uncomfortable, you won't wear it, it won't fit correctly. Um, so it's really, you do need to take account of ease. Uh, but these are included, design and ease are included in the finished measurements. So if we're talking about a bust of 40 and a half, that actually relates to a bust of 36, if you're looking at the measurements on the pattern. So it's added in an additional four inches, uh, four and a half inches in fact, to give you room for movement so that it isn't so constricting. And that's the information on the on the back of the pattern completed. Now, when you open the pattern, you usually get two types of paper. 
uh, one very lightweight tissue paper, which I'm not going to open at this stage. Uh, that's going to be opened in a separate tutorial. Uh, this is actually the pattern pieces um, and they need to be worked, treated and cared for very carefully. Um, you don't want to be tearing them, you don't want to be ripping them and as some of our core members had, you don't want to have animals going in there and shredding them uh, because you cannot put tissue paper that's been shredded back together again with any kind of um, usable pattern which is um, very, very saddening for whoever that happens to. So we'll pop that back in the, um, in the envelope to keep those particularly safe. And now we have instruction sheets. We have general directions for each, oh, there's loads of bits of paper, for each of the garments. And there, if I just walk you through the first part, you yet again get a refresher of the, the pattern number you will be shown the different elements, the front and the reverse of each of the pattern pieces, each of the garment pieces. And then it talks you through the 24 pieces that are included in the pattern. So you have a front and back, uh, you have a yoke front and back, you have a loop, you have front facing, back facing, um, pockets, casings, elastic guides, all sorts of, of pattern pieces for the, for the different elements of the different garments. Um, it also includes general directions for using a pattern. So you have some, some pattern symbols, which I'll go through in greater detail in another video. Talks about how to adjust your pattern if you want to adjust it. Again, a separate video will be included on, on how to do that in detail. And then it talks about cutting and marking and quick marking and pinning and snipping. Um, each of these techniques I will go through in more detail. At the moment, I'm literally walking you through what is included on the paperwork for a pattern so that it doesn't cause panic. Because when you see this amount of paper and this amount of instruction, if you're not understanding or expecting these elements, it can just be really, really daunting. Um, it also includes any special cutting notes about directions of salvage, um, whether you're cutting double layers or single layer, if you're cutting against a fold, um, all of those things are described within the pattern general directions. You also get some cutting layouts and um, it talks about pattern pieces being laid printed side down, pattern pieces being laid printed side up. And um, again, each of these items are gonna have images hopefully coming up next to me so that you can see what I'm talking about rather than me holding up bits of paper blocking my face and you still not being able to see it clearly. So for example there are some uh, layouts, cutting layouts for the top and so there's different versions for different sizes so the, the first one 1A is size 8 to 12 um, as you can see some of those pieces run along the selvage, some of those pieces run along the fold, some of the pieces are upside down and then there is a um, 1B which shows you sizes 14 to 18 and there is a final one showing you sizes up to from 20 up to 24. So those layouts are the most effective way to use your fabric. Um, they're there as guidance. If you want to throw caution to the wind and simply slice up your, your fabric in any which way, of course that is completely up to you. You can choose to do that. But the um, the writers of the pattern have tried to make it as easy as possible for you by giving you these cutting layouts. And once we've gone through those cutting layouts, you then start with the sewing directions. Um, and these are step-by-step -step instructions on how to create the actual garment. Um, and it shows, most of them show insides, outsides, interfacing, they talk about stay stitching, um, there's all sorts of, of phrases and again I will be working my way through all of these phrases and what they mean. I will also be putting together a glossary um, on my Fiery Phoenix website so that when that is in place there will be a link underneath this video. Uh, but that is the, the walkthrough without going into the details of this particular make of what you would find on your pattern pieces um, and what is included when you purchase a pre-printed pattern. Uh, the next video that comes along will talk about how to prepare your pattern pieces um, and we'll walk you through how to copy a pattern and also how to transfer markings, how to cut it out um, and, and that sort of thing. So hopefully this is a useful introduction and um, 
you'll stick around and have a look at the rest of the videos um, in this series. If this is the first time you've been to this video, this channel, hi, it's good to see you here. Um, I release videos on a Tuesday and a Thursday. But the best way to stay in the loop is to subscribe so that those videos just drop into your feed. Um, but it would be fabulous if you came along and joined the Starting to Sew group on Facebook. There'll be a link in the description below for that group as well. Um, there are um, a nice selection of really helpful seamstresses and a fabulous group of learner sewers who share their work and um, help each other out. And it's, it's across the world, it's worldwide. So pretty much any time you want to put up a question, we've got an answer for you. So come along, say hi, and um, I hope to see you in the next video. See you later. Bye for now.